This is a 52-year-old man who is in a deceleration injury, and I am confident that all of you are focused on the bifrontal encephalomalacia from prior trauma. Let me scroll a bit and take your time and have a look as I scroll up and down and see what catches your eye. There are multiple areas of white matter signal alteration. The patient is shunted. You can see a little bit of the shunt tube right here to your left. I have my arrow on it. And perhaps a few of you are dialed into the thickened pia and arachnoid. Something is rotten in the state of pia and arachnoid. And what might that be? Let me go to the midline of a T1 spin echo non-contrast image and then I have on the far right a contrast enhanced image in the coronal projection of the same patient. What are you thinking? I am thinking that uh, this is a shunted patient and the question is well how's this shunt working? And shunts as you guys know can stop working or they can work too well which is the problem here. Well the ventricles, okay. ventricles aren't big here. No they're small right and also look at the enhancement of the pachy meninges, okay? So this is not leptomeningeal enhancement like you'd see with a tumor or something. Okay, pachy meningeal enhancement, okay? So that's one finding. Ventricles, small. So, so my idea of something is rotten in the state of pia and arachnoid is wrong. It's actually the dura mater, the pachy meninges that the are The pachy meninges, that's correct. And also, if you look here on the T2, there's thin extra axial collection, okay? So we're kind of mounting up a couple of things, right? Extra axial collection, small ventricles, shunted patient. Okay, what's the next thing we're going to be looking for? Okay, let's look at the sagittal. Now you guys probably are very familiar, or maybe you're familiar with the diagnosis of intracranial hypertension. Okay, remember empty cella, optic nerve sheet dilatation. Okay, well what about hypotension? Well, that used to be called pseudotumor cerebri. Pseudotumor cerebri. cerebri. Right. So hypotension is the flip side. And this is a problem that somebody like me has helped to create because what it, uh, hypotension is just an iatrogenic form over shunting. You, you did it. You're, you're a very it. bad man. Right. So it, look at the, this is as one has a very good finding, which is part of the constellation, but you don't see as often. So hypertension, pseudotumor cerebri, empty cella. Here's a big pituitary, okay? Something is decompressed here, okay? So this pituitary is large. So we have a constellation of findings doing pachymeningeal enhancement, small ventricles, extra axial collections, and a big pituitary. Big. Okay. So those mount up to a lot of the potential findings of intracranial hypotension, shunted patient. So hypotension due to over shunting. Let okay. me put it up. Let me tie it up in a neat little package because what's actually happened is the surgeon created low pressure in the brain. So what happens? the other structures compensatorily get bigger. So if you look at the axial, you'll notice that the superior sagittal sinus and the lateral sinuses, if we can get down there, are a little bit prominent. Right. They're blowing up to fill up the space. So that's one side. Now let's look at, this, at the, the veins. The veins down here yeah. are prominent. Right. You can see them right there. Look, the They're blowing up to fill up the space. The pituitary gland is blowing up to fill up the space. Things are sagging down. Look at the mamelopontine distance. That's decreased. The optic chiasm is pressed down on the pituitary gland. You've got pachymeningeal enhancement. And here again is our enlarged pituitary gland. All these findings come together in a neat little package to give you the diagnosis of not spontaneous, but rather post-surgical intracranial hypotension from overshunting. Correct. Done. Thank you.